I read recently online that Nintendo 64 emulation has come a long way on the PS Vita, so I decided to test it out. Uh, last that I tested N64 was probably over a year ago in early 2020, and it wasn't that great at the time, um, so I kind of you know put it to the side. So let's um, let's give it a test. I don't have it actually inst anything installed on this PS Vita right now. So what I'm actually going to do is go through it with you guys so you can you know, figure out how to do it with me um, because a lot of people don't know how to install these type programs. Um, so yeah, this is a, obviously a modded PS Vita. This is a Vita 1000. I also have a Vita 2000. It works the same on both. Um, so the easiest way is if you have the uh, Vita Homebrew browser installed, you can just go in here and grab the emulator off that. You can also install it via a VPK um, manually, but we'll do it this way first. So you go in here, wait for it to load up. Okay, once it loads up, we have uh, you know some different homebrew in here, some new stuff. You basically just use the right shoulder button or left shoulder button to scroll through here. We go over to emulators and it's actually right near the top here. So we have two different versions here. Um, the top one here appears to be an older version. So let's go with this. This has the newest tag. It looks like December 13th of 2020. So that's only a few months ago. Click on that. And this is version 0 0.6, which is actually the same you can get online if you get it off uh, GitHub, for example. It's the same version. But uh, for ease of use, let's install it this way. Um, later, I'm going to switch over to my other Vita and I'll show you how to do it with uh, a VPK as well if you don't want to use the Homebrew browser, but I prefer it this way. So we just install it by hitting download. And we just wait for this to download and install. Okay, and once that's installed, you just exit out and then you're gonna go into Vita Shell. You're gonna to wanna to check your settings here. Now, if you uh, hit the start button, it's gonna pop up with settings here. You can use the USB setting here and if you're plugged directly into your computer, you can then transfer uh, you know, your game dumps into a folder on your Vita. I don't want to do that because it's going to cut out the video, so I'm going to do it via FTP client. So you just go with that or USB, whichever you prefer. So in my case, FTP. Uh, if you're going to use FTP, File Transfer Protocol, you just hit Select. It's going to bring you up these numbers here, and then you're going to go over to your computer using uh, an FTP program such as WinSCP uh, and make that transfer. So let's do that real quick. Okay, and then in the program, uh, this is in this case, it's WinSCP. So you're going to be in this program over here. Uh, you're going to want to connect to your device. So what you're going to want to do once you're in here is you're going to figure out which folder you want to put these in. Um, if you have an SD card, SD to Vita is what I'm using, and you have a micro SD installed. In my case, I put my stuff in this UMAO, UMA0 folder. I come in here and then you know I have RetroArch or RetroArch ROMs in here. Um, I'm going to actually put them in there even though it's not going to be running through RetroArch. Uh, I'll make a new directory. I'll just call it that. And then you're essentially just going to move these uh, backups in here. The PS Vita doesn't have the fastest uh, Wi-Fi, so if you're doing it over FTP, it does take a little bit of time, but that's uh, that's already done. And then we're essentially done. We're completely done on the PC now. We can go back to the PS Vita and uh, start working over there. Okay, so here we are back on the PS Vita. Uh, we can just close this out if we use if you use the FTP version. Um, we can come in here and have a look and make sure that actually transferred. I mean, it did, but let's have a quick look. We go down here, and we can see the N64 is already added in. Pretty cool, eh? I thought so. So then we're done with Vita Shell. We close that out, and we're going to go find our new emulator, which is just down here. Load it up. When it first loads, it's going to uh, do some downloading here. So just let it run for a second or two, and then you're essentially good to go here. Uh, you're actually using your finger, you can't see this, but I'm actually using my finger on the touch screen, kind of like a mouse, to move this around here. Uh, you can also use these, uh, you know, your navigation, your uh, D-pad, or you can use your analog. So this is the analog here, it's moving quite nice. You can use the finger, this is my finger there. 
um, whichever works for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to Options. I'm going to go down to Custom ROM Paths because I want to tell it where mine are. And I need to tell it where my backups are. So you need to remember what you put. I do in fact remember. And then we're good to go. That's where my stuff is located. That's the uh, path. Uh, hit Enter. And there we go. It shows up right away. So now, you know, I have that folder there. Um, you know, if you put a different, put them in a different folder, you have to tell it where they are. But, you know, whatever you're using, if you have a memory card or you're using internal storage on the PS Vita 2000, or if you have a uh, SD to Vita and you're using an SD card, you need to know where those paths are so you can put it in there. Um, remember, you can, if you have a memory card and an SD to Vita, you can use both at the same time. So you can set one up for you know, your Vita games or whatever, and the other one can be for, you know, maybe like your virtual PSP games or your dumps or whatever. So, yep, so we can click on one of these and get them to run, but let's just have a quick look up here and see what other options we have. Uh, so it looks like we can do uh, some different settings here. Frame limits. Um, I haven't played with any of these before because I've never used this. But, uh, yeah, so we can play around with this if we have problems, but let's uh, let's get one loaded up. Click on the game and it starts loading. This is all done in real time. We'll see how quick it is, and uh, yeah, that's uh, so far it looks pretty good. Sound is great. I'm not doing a direct audio feed. I'm going to do this off my microphone because it uh, gets a little funny sometimes. So, so let's get into the game here. A little bit of scratchiness on the sound, but I'd say quite good. This is actually going surprisingly smoothly. Um, I mean, even like I said, even a year ago, it's, right now it's uh, April 2021, and even a year ago, this was just not doable at that point. A little bit of scratchiness as the actual game loads up, but let's see here. It looks even better on my handheld, obviously, than it does on this capture here, but... So this is playing actually perfectly, I would say. And so to exit back, you just hit the select button and you can come back in here. Um, so I picked that game because it, uh, it was, um, it's typically a little bit more challenging because it's you know it's pretty fast paced, but there's definitely even more challenging games. So let's come in here. We'll close that. Let's try Smash. I find I don't know what it is about this game, but I find that it a lot of different devices struggle with it. Um, I I do emulation and uh, play backups on my Wii U that I have, and it seems to work fine. But a lot of other devices struggle. A little funny business with the sound there, but. It's a little scratchy. Visually, it just, it looks stunning to be honest. Again, during loading, it gets a bit scratchy, but that's to be expected. There's a lot going on here.
Yeah, so the D-pad's not doing anything, actually. Yep, controls all seem pretty solid. Analog sticks feel really responsive. Yep, so there you go. Um, the sound is uh, a little bit scratchy, but definitely acceptable. In terms of the actual gameplay, though, it's it's perfect, I would say, almost. Um, let's... Uh... Okay, so let's uh, let's try overclocking this a bit. So, you know, I, I can overclock my Vita because I have PSV shell installed. Let's try giving it a little bit of an overclock. Um, I mean, the visuals are fine, but let's see if it improves the sound at all. I kind of doubt it because... The sound typically is more of an emulation problem than a, a speed problem. So uh, yeah, that's all set to max. The CPU is the only thing that wasn't to max. Let's put it up. Okay. Yeah, so as expected, the sound doesn't really improve because that's not really what's causing this problem here. It's just an emulation issue. But uh, we can see there that the uh, frames per second are up to 60, locked essentially, which is quite good for what it is. Let's, uh, let's turn that emulation back off, or that uh, overclock back off, and see if it's maintained 60. Yes, it does. So there you go, other than you know some very, very minor audio problems in, in Smash and probably some other titles, we're running Nintendo 64 emulation on the PS Vita at 60 frames per second locked without overclocking. So you don't have to even you know, compromise your battery life. Um, I'd say this is a pretty massive improvement from where we were you know, about, uh, about a year ago or so I said. So obviously a big shout out to the developer or developers of this uh, emulator. It's, it's really come a long way. I can't pronounce the name very well. It's Rinnegata Monte, um, if that's how you say it. But uh, yeah, very impressive. This is uh, version 0 0.6 and it's already running just essentially immaculately. So um, yeah, so that's the easy way to get it installed. You basically just get the homebrew browser, download the, uh, download the actual emulator, get uh, the, the backups onto your Vita using either FTP or um, your USB and load it up and start playing. And there you go. Okay, so to do this manually, rather than using Homebrew Browser, you're gonna go to this website here. I'll link it in the comments. Then you're gonna go and get the uh, the VPK, which you're going to install directly on your PS Vita. So you can see down here, this is Daedalus x64.vpk. You just click on that, you save that to your computer, and then you need to actually move that to your PS Vita. Uh, once it's on your PS Vita, then you're just going to install it directly there using uh, Vita Shell. So there it is on my computer, and we're just going to move it over here. And I'm going to put mine in the UXO folder. You can really put this in any folder that you want, uh, but I like to install my stuff into the UXO folder. Uh, once it's actually in there, um, I usually go into the data folder, and you can dump all your stuff in there. You can see here I have a lots. Of, I have lots of junk in here right now that I need to delete. Um, but yeah, you basically just grab it from your computer, drag it into the data folder, and it's going to copy it over. Once it's copied over, then you know, you're going to see it in here, but you're going to want to go back to your PS Vita itself, go back to Vita Shell, and that's where you're going to actually install it. So here we are back in PS Vita Shell. Uh, into the Vita Shell, you're going to go in here back to the same folder. In this case, you're going back to data. Um, you, know, you, can, you, you can come in here and you can delete things just like this here. Uh, but yeah, you're basically just going to click on it. So you go to the one you want. They're highlighted in orange, the ones that can be installed with the VPK. 
So you basically just click on that, hit X, it's gonna ask if you wanna install. It's gonna give you a prompt and you say yes, because it's trusted in this case. And then you just let it install. And uh, once it's done here, it just takes a little bit of, a few moments here. It's like quite a bit click quicker than the homebrew browser uh, method. But once it's installed here, you can basically just load it up. Okay, so now that it's installed, just close out of the Vita shell, go down to the newly installed app, and uh, here it is, you just load it up. Make sure it works. And there you go, working just like it did on the uh, other method where we downloaded it with the homebrew browser. So there you go, there's a couple different ways you can install this. You can use the homebrew browser method, which is uh, the quick way, I usually use that myself. Um, but you can certainly install the manual using the VPK, especially if you don't have the homebrew browser. Um, that's the other route to go to get to the same point.